Good morning. There is an appropriate amount of buzz and energy and excitement. We have a lot of great things happening on our campus and we have a lot more to come as we launch into the fall. We want to just remind you that uh, our kids ministry has started and Pastor Paul and I survived. Uh, we are leading with some other great volunteers on Wednesday nights. We, had almost, we, we haven't done this in a long time. So we were expecting maybe half a dozen kids. We had almost 20 kids. Uh, there were a good half dozen that do not belong to our church. And it was a wonderful, fun evening. We did. Paul does a great job on the guitar. Thank you for Paul. Paul does all the famous songs that you grew up with, and it's just really great to have that nostalgic back, and I'm helping with uh, things as well. We're having a great time. And so we had that. We also want to just say it again. Okay. We want to celebrate someone who's having a birthday tomorrow, uh, Bill Bowers. Bill Barnes. Bill Barnes. 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 Well, it, he's 101. So how great is that? And this morning, as we come into worship, we are also seeing the return of our acolytes. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. You should affirm them. You'll have a time that they're going to be here this for the first time today, and uh, we'll be pushing that with our kids as well to have that opportunity to participate in worship. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to the prelude.
Good morning, everyone. This thing has a life of its own. Let's continue our worship by standing and singing the intro together. call to worship. Lord, we gather to worship. Hear our praises, Lord. Lord, we gather to learn. See our faithfulness that glorifies you, Lord. Be glorified by your people, O oh God. Let us worship God. Jesus, I love thee, I know not mine. For thee, all the follies of sin, I resign. My gracious Redeemer, I sin. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I let us now go before God in a time of confession. First, silently, and then together. Let us pray. Amen. 
And now together. Lord, we read in your word that your kindness leads us to repentance. Get out of our mouths that sing your praises, words that contradict your nature flow freely. Forgive us, renew our hearts in Christ, and show us the way of righteousness again. Amen. <coughs> sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the Grant us peace, grant us peace. Friends, hear and know the assurance of God's faithfulness. Christ loves us and gave himself up for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. Therefore, be assured that your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We count one another 
Amen. This time in worship, we have an opportunity for the children to come forward. One of my favorite times during the week. Come on up. Come on up. Don't be shy. There's my friends. All right. Some of you are there on Wednesday. Man, that was the highlight of my week. Fun, 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 fun. No, I need everyone to do their best when they come up here because we need some help with something, okay? So I'm actually going to stand over this way, make sure I don't get any feedback. Come on up. Come on up. All right. So I need your best cute face. Can you give me your best cute face? Give me your best cute face. Emmy's got it down. She's got the hands together. Okay, well, things like this make uh, children's time fun because you guys are really beautiful and handsome and smart and cute. And Wednesday was great. And we did something for the first time on Wednesday. And there's a picture of it over here. We picked for the very first time, and you have to say something when I say this word, we picked what's called a super kid. Now, when I say the word super kid, you're supposed to go, ooh, ah. Now, you all have to do it also, okay? Last Wednesday, we picked our very first super kid. And it was amazing. It was Lola. Now, she's here. Now, the reason Lola was a super kid is because she came to church the week before. She also signed up to be an acolyte, and she came on Wednesday. Now, there's lots of ways to be a super kid, because every kid really is a super kid in God's eyes. But this week, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to practice kindness. Now, kindness is when you choose to do something nice for somebody else who doesn't earn it. You just do it to be kind. Maybe you could be kind to a brother or a sister or a teacher or a parent or a neighbor. Do you think you could do that? Now, we're all going to be doing it as adults as well. So if you see an adult here not being kind, you are welcome to go up to them and say, you're not being kind. <laughs> OK? Now look, today's sermon is on this. And I wanted them to look cute so that you would know. From this point forward, nobody here is allowed to talk about not having children for Sunday school because we're going to ask you to be Sunday school teachers. We don't have enough parents. We don't have enough volunteers as it is. Sunday school is a commitment. And I'm going to be talking in the sermon about how my life was transformed by a Sunday school teacher who is more than a person who teaches the Bible stories. We'll give you everything you need. We need people on Sunday morning. And we need people on Wednesday nights, because if we don't have you, we can't do it. Paul and I have taken this challenge seriously. We are committed to Wednesday nights through the end of the year. So Paul's playing guitar, I'm doing games, and it is a lot of fun. But we already had trouble on Wednesday. We needed to break the kids up into smaller groups. And the goal is to break them into more groups, because that's how you grow. You put them in small groups, you get leaders who give them a lot of an attention, and you be an adult friend, and you can grow the program. We can't do it with the number of adults that we have now. Now, my wife has answered the challenge, and she's going to be doing interim children's ministry until we get somebody. So make sure that you thank her, because she has never done it before. We are publicizing the job, and we're going to get people. But until then, she's going to be helping, and we're casting vision for youth as well. Starting this Sunday, we're going to meet with the youth team. I know it's going to work. We appreciate your patience, but we will need more adults to do it. If you understood what I said, say amen. amen. Now, do you think you guys can be kind this week? Uh, there's, wow, even openly hesitating. I like it. All right, well, let me pray for you, and then you're going to go for your time for children. And hey, thank you, Emmy. Thank you, Lola. Lola for being the super kid, and Emmy for volunteering to be an acolyte. All of you can be an acolyte as well on Sunday morning. It's a big deal. It's a big deal, and it makes a big difference in our worship, okay? I will tell them what grade they have to be in when they sign up for it, for sure. Okay? Let me pray for you. God, thank you for our young men and women who are becoming the next leaders in our church. Even now, we know you're preparing them to do great things. Help them to be kind and help them to grow in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you affirm our acolytes this morning also? And with that, you guys can go to class. You can go to class, and then we can stand and greet one another as our kids go to their time.
seated. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 25 through 32. Hear now the word of God. Therefore, ridding yourselves of falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, because we are parts of one another. Be angry and yet do not sin, and do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not give the devil an opportunity. The one who steals must no longer steal, but rather he must labor, producing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with the one who has need. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, But if there is any good word for edification according to the need of the moment, say that so that it will give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be removed from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. Our second reading comes to us from Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us an offering, and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Today's titled message comes from the series, The The Kindness Challenge. And this is a very popular thing to discuss. And I'm so grateful to have series like this where the topic is chosen for you and the passages are chosen for you. And Before worship, we've got some adult classes. We've got a a children's class and a youth class, and we have some during the week. Today would be the last day if you want to jump in on this uh, class uh, challenge and uh, find a time that works for you. Today we're talking about uh, following instructions, and Ephesians is very straightforward. I don't think anyone's surprised by what's there, but I want to say how this is stuck in my brain. And so I mentioned a few uh, messages ago about a friend I had in ministry who stopped being in ministry. And it's related to this topic. He preached a sermon that was very pointed about behavior and good behavior and bad behavior. And when he told me he was going to leave the ministry, he said, "Um, uh, I'm tired of being the dog. And I knew exactly what he was referring to. We had a class together in which a seminary professor said, just remember, these are some of your first instructions for being a pastor. But remember, teachers, police officers, Anyone in perceived authority, store clerks, anyone who thinks that that person has some type of authority will be treated this way. Remember, people don't want to go home and kick their dog. They don't want to yell at their spouse. They don't want to yell at their children. You're an easy target. And he said, it's not just pastors, it's everyone. And he said, furthermore, it's the way of Christ to take that kind of 
behavior or outpouring of whatever's happening to that person and to give back something else. And basically, my friend said, I just, I can't do it anymore. And I think of all the teachers during the pandemic who just can't do it anymore. They're stuck. They're doing the best they can. They're having to do virtual. They were never trained for that. They're having to learn it on the fly. They're answering questions. There's kids. There's people moving in the background. And I thought, my gosh, how many complaints are those teachers getting? I think of safety officers, police, firemen, people who show up who don't behave in the way because people use that as an outlet. We're going to go through today's instruction manual for what we do when we receive that, but remembering the challenge to be radically kind as believers and followers of Jesus Christ. And this is popular everywhere. When I left San Diego, they had already planned this. A few weeks, a few months later, they did the same kindness challenge with the same material. It's all over the country. This is a picture of my son's high school. And I was walking by to meet his instructors. And I mean, talk about being in the right place with what we prayed for. He's got a great set of teachers. We had what we didn't have, what we prayed for. He's got two people in every class. I mean, I was just tickled. But going down the hall, I saw this and I thought, it's everywhere. Be kind whenever possible. It is always possible, the Dalai Lama. It's on one of their boards. Human kindness has never uh, weakened the stamina or softened the fiber of a free people. A nation does not have to be cruel to be tough. Franklin Roosevelt. I mean, it's just, it's universal across religions. Kindness is a choice and a way of being. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, speak to us from your word that was written long ago, but that transcends time and relevance. It is relevant for today. Help us to find the truth behind the words that may be beyond the obvious. We know we're supposed to be kind, but help us to process what happens when we don't feel kind ourselves. Help us to learn from you, Holy Spirit, on a daily basis, dependent upon you for wisdom and strength and courage, and to see the end that we are pursuing, a world transformed for the glory of our Creator, a world that points to Christ as the Savior, and a people who look and act different from the rest of the world. May we learn from the kindness challenge that comes from your word. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Here's some of the passage that we read today, and I've just been doing what I would do when I would read just devotionally, highlighting specific things. He's, whenever you see therefore, remember it's translated from another language into English. He's saying there's something that came before this that builds up to this main point. Therefore, having just listed all of those things for you, ridding yourselves of falsehood. And note what I've highlighted. Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. It is not that anger doesn't happen, but that we don't know how to process it when it occurs. So I uh, had a member in Plano who had the opportunity whenever she would go, this was, gosh, 15 years ago, she left work at the same time every day, and she would treat herself to a sonic iced tea. Now, people who are iced tea drinkers know there are different qualities of iced tea. I don't get it myself, but my wife has a brand, and she said, if they don't have this brand, that's, I don't want that one. And apparently, sonic is another one of those things that people like for iced tea. She would stop in one of those little booths. On her way home, she would decompress, just have a little iced tea. Okay. Now I'm ready to go home. And she said there was a person that she noticed. It finally dawned on her there was another person doing the same thing. In the back of Sonic, not in one of the booths, parked in a car, and she passed her one day, and this woman is in her car holding her steering wheel, and she is screaming. She is screaming and turning red in the face and crying. And she knew this because she thought, so she pulled in and just, you know, is there something I can do to help you? She rolled down the window and said, uh, I go to therapy. And my therapist said that what I should do when I'm having a bad day is I should stop somewhere and just let it all out. That way I don't pour it all out over other people. And it turns out the woman had some type of past trauma that was not of something she could control. And she had a little thing in her brain that would trigger it and she wasn't able to control it. So she learned I can hold off until I get to Sonic. And this member asked me, what do you, what do you think about this? So I said, it's brilliant. Number one, she's seeing a therapist. Nobody here should ever be ashamed of seeing a therapist. I'm not a trained therapist, 
I can meet with you. I can pray with you. I can give you some advice as a friend and a pastor who's seen things, but I'm not a trained therapist. Go to therapy, whether it's anger or fear or anxiety or just a hurt or a wound. Never let somebody tell you there's something wrong with going to a trained professional to get some help. She was in a process. This was not the end of her therapy. It was something she was doing to cope to be able to function. How many of you would appreciate somebody doing that instead of passing you on the freeway and giving you a lovely hand gesture? <laughs> or how many of us could agree that, that again, not just anger, but think of the, the people that are frozen by fear. It's not that we read this and say it's all about anger. That's one thing. Anything can be a foothold for something that's not of God when we don't, don't learn how to process it. All of us are challenged to respond in kindness, but understanding that some of the transformation starts in us. We've got to find those reserves of love and find ways to react in new ways. Someone wrote in one of their daily devotion responses about this West Texas sheriff that was a uh, family member. That's not the person. I just thought it was a cool picture. <laughs> and sent a note and just said, you know, uh, I had a relative who's a West Texas sheriff, and he said, you know, you can always ramp up and escalate your emotional response, but it's hard to ramp down. And he learned as being a sheriff that when there was an emergency crisis and someone was super angry, hot, whatever it was, he could get in his car and just go 110 miles per hour with ready with guns blazes, or he could go in calm and then see if the situation really merited that level of response. He learned not to respond by an instinct, but he learned to respond through training to different kinds of scenarios. We have to do the same thing because everybody's got a trigger. You've got one. You've got something that prompts you of a memory. It's locked in that lizard part of your brain. I've got them too. I've got things that are not important that are locked into my brain. Sometimes it's important, sometimes it's not. I was trained by my father. Your rear end is in the seat for dinner five minutes early or you're late. And now when people aren't early, I start feeling my blood pressure rise. And where, you know, when we're going somewhere, it's skin. Sometimes it's helpful. Sometimes it's not important. We all have things like that. Something that's caused you and gotten cemented in. And what scripture does through Holy Spirit is it breaks all that stuff up and makes you look at yourself and think, why do I respond the way I respond? What is it that's really God is communicating? We read a little further. So again, this is one example. Anger is an example, but it could be anxiety, fear. It goes on a little further. This is Paul writing to the early church. Uh, if you used to steal, so I've paraphrased here. If you used to steal, don't do that anymore. So it would be as if Paul was writing to you saying, if you used to do this, and you know it's wrong. Don't do that anymore. It's just a very simple. You used to be this. Don't do that anymore. Don't speak rotten words. How beautiful is that phrase? Don't speak rotten words. We've all done it. It's not helpful. It doesn't build anyone up. It's a rotten thing. We're just spewing it out. We've got to think contemplatively before we speak. Use good words for edification that fit the moment so as to give grace to those who hear. So this is not what, what I used to get in the mountains, okay, which is this. This hurts me to tell you this. Okay, it hurts me. It hurts me, but you're a horrible person. I mean, <laughs> I say this in Christian love. I say it in love, but you're ugly. I mean, you know, you just, you can't do that. It doesn't, you don't get to mask it and pretend. What actually gives grace to other people is an acknowledgement, is an acknowledgement that I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. So we speak things in private. We don't speak to other people about other people. That's gossip and slander. We don't get hurt or wounded and pick up the phone and call somebody and say, blah, blah, blah. We go to the person because it offers grace to them. Perhaps you will find surprisingly that a person was unaware of what they're doing. They grew up differently than you did, a different context. In my family, sarcasm and teasing is funny. I have learned universally it is not funny for the vast majority of people. It just isn't. People don't take it well. 
What words do we use that are rotten? What words do we use to build up people for grace? Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not cause the Holy Spirit to be grooved by these words that you use. You were sealed. You were set aside and sealed for another time and another place that is eternal. And if you can't think eternally, that would change your here and now perspective. Try it. I'm in this for the long run. I can take a lot more when I see that I'm in it for the long run. God has already given you a promise about eternity. We've got to get from here to there. And there's a challenge behind it. Now, for all of us, uh, it's different and it's personal when we talk about instruction manuals, because that's what this is. This is my first vehicle, and it's a 1962 bug. I don't think I've shown it to you yet, but there's the Haynes repair manual that I grew up using. I got this, this car. That was it when it was first painted. My parents paid $300 for this. And the story behind it and learning how to work on it is really the story, not the vehicle. I, it, came with, uh, it came with a lot of things that needed to be done. It was a six-volt car. So at night, it looked like I had two flashlights for headlights. So I had, to, I had to convert it to 12 volts, and I did that with a lot of friends. But the story behind it, the reason I got that car is because when my parents were divorced when I was in fourth grade, my, I lived with my father, and my father did not know what to do. My dad's a pastor. You've heard him. He's got the real southern accent. Uh, I lived with him. He had no child care plans. I was too young to come home by myself and be by myself. So he prayed and prayed and prayed. I've only seen my father weep a few times. I cry more than my dad does. Uh, it's a big control thing for my dad. But one day at home, he tells the story that Glenn and Spike Spiker showed up to our home. They were in their late 70s, early 80s. Uh, Glenn, the mom matriarch of that family, had osteoporosis, and it was pretty severe. So she walked with a cane and crippled pretty heavily. Uh, Spike smoked a, cig uh, smoked a pipe, and he would often bring it in the house unlit, but you could smell it all over him. And the first time I met them, so I was in fourth grade, third or fourth grade, and they said, you don't have to do anything with us. We'll just be here when you come home. That, that's all we're here to do, Brian. They showed up at my dad's office and said, we know you don't have child care. We know you don't have it. We've been listening to the Lord, and God told us to show up and offer to be at home for Brian until you get home for work. We'll do it every day. You just tell us when you don't need us. And my father wept because he was lost. I drive a stick shift car to this day because he told me you should. He told me you need to learn how to drive a stick shift. He let me drive his car in fourth grade up and down the road and learn how to drive a stick shift. He had a yellow Volkswagen bug. And from the fourth grade to the time I got in high school, long after I could be at home by myself, they were the only people in my dad's church that I would stop by their house to see them and make sure that they marked my growth right next to their grandchildren and spend time with them. This is what we're looking for for our children. When you see this picture of our super kid and you think about first your behavior, are we kind? We have to remember that part of being kind is holding each other accountable for what we do when we're in the wrong. How much better would church, the world, life be if we felt brave enough to love somebody enough to say, stop? You're not being kind. In private, offering them grace. When we talk about Sunday school teachers, I'm looking for people like Glenn and Spike. I can't tell you a thing they taught me in Sunday school. They were my Sunday school teachers, but they made an indelible mark on my life. They were the kindest, sweetest, most loving, brave and courageous people. That combination of not weakness, but pure kindness. We're here just because you have a need. It permeated who they were. That is the standard next to Christ that I hold up, the spikers. Long beyond when people say, oh, there's, there's no way I can serve in the church. I don't have the energy anymore. My kids aren't there anymore. We need grandparents and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters in the church to step up because we're going to have more super kids. But the instructions I'm asking you to consider go beyond being kind 
but instead investing in generations to come. Can I get an amen? We see the following verse then that continues. We're going to read this aloud, and let us consider this a challenge and a command. This is it summarized. Therefore, getting we read at the beginning, getting rid of all false truth, all bitterness. Don't use rotten words. If you used to do this before, don't do this now. You know what the list would be for you. You used to have fear of this, anxiety of this. Don't do that anymore. Instead, do this. Let's read this aloud together as our challenge to launch into this series together. Would you read it with me? All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be removed from us along with all malice. Let us be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven us. We continue with the series and think of the challenge that starts within the church to model the right kind of kindness within the church walls. We're asking for adults to step up and help children and help youth. We're asking every person to consider how do we hold each other accountable when we are not kind? I share this simple story with you about people not being aware. And we think of what does this look like? Um, when as recently as within the last two years, I would go in to preach and you see, you see I teach Sunday school and I put I, I was wearing this shirt, and I was wearing different shoes. So when I get ready to preach, I put on different shoes, and I always put on a jacket or something that kind of changes my mindset about preaching. And once I start getting closer to preaching, I get a little bit more amped up, and I'm memorizing my notes. And I typically sort of zone in on what I'm doing. And I had this person come to my office in San Diego, and I was so appreciative that she did. I was so, I was so grateful. Unbeknownst to me, because I had no way of knowing. I had been there five years, four years, three and a half, four years. And I didn't know that some of the pastors used to stop and do this visiting thing. And because we were going from service to service to service, I was inadvertently being rude because I was on the way to worship. And so she came and just sat down and talked to me and shared where she was coming from without belittling or belaboring me. She didn't go to an elder. She didn't go to everybody else. She came right to me and the first words out of her mouth were, I'm really nervous. I'm really nervous because I don't want to upset you. But I know the biblical mandate is to come to the person. And this has just been bothering me. And I was so grateful she came. And then she was relieved. It was no big deal. It was a big deal to her, but it wasn't a big deal to me. We all do these micro actions of offending people that build and build and build. And before you know it, we've got people shooting each other on the road. We've got parents yelling at teachers. We've got people yelling at police officers. It's like these things are building and we don't have a way to just get it out and have private one-on-one -on -one conversations with one another. Let's build each other up. I'll make mistakes, you make mistakes, but not just with me or Paul, but I mean with one another. For, our, for us in our family, we're challenged by this right now. I've got basically two teenage boys and we're, we're noticing this is the time for them to learn how to treat one another. It's a challenge for us. It goes across all relationships, family, outside the family. And let's be honest. Let's be candid. It's pretty easy to be nice to people in a superficial way. We had this in our class this morning. I asked, is it harder to be kind to strangers or people you know? And it seems like the people you know are the harder ones to be kind to. That's who he's addressing in this letter. Be kind to one another in the church. Be united in love and work through these differences. You know, my example was I went to McDonald's and the coffee machine was broker. And I was like, you know, that's okay. It's not your fault. And I drove out of there saying, Brian, what a great person you are. Oh, <laughs> suffering for Jesus with no coffee. I mean, you know, it's easy. It's the people that wound you, that get in there, that we're challenged to think about. And let's not forget what these passages challenge us to do. Therefore, be imitators of Christ. Be imitators of Christ as beloved children and walk in love. That is our standard. And this word for love is agape. It's not friendship love. It's not romantic love. It's a love specifically set aside for God. 
It's a different way of being. And Jesus models it for us. Or as my seminary professor said, sometimes you bleed. It's not fair. Treat, people don't treat you right. They don't behave the way they should. Sometimes you bleed. Kindness is when you bleed, choosing to not give back venom for venom, but love instead. Take the challenge. Next week, we'll continue with it together. God, speak to those who would have ears to hear and hearts to understand. And may we all be challenged by the kindness challenge. May we all have a moment where we think of those people who were Sunday school teachers, school teachers, relatives, neighbors, people who invested love into us. They gave us that agape love, things we didn't deserve. They responded with grace and kindness when we ourselves were at our worst. May we see that the world needs more agape kindness, radical forgiveness, compassionate grace, measures of restraint that seem supernatural. Teach us what it means to be in a world that hungers for kindness. And may your word edify us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. And now as God's people, let us stand to proclaim what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, let us now continue in our time of worship as we go before God together in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day. So many of us with our hearts heavy, so many things on our minds. Dear Lord, we pray for those who are sick. Lord, as disease seems to be growing in our land, we ask that you be with those who have fallen ill. Grant them peace, grant them healing. We would ask that you be with those caring for them. Grant them strength, keep them safe. Give them a measure of your love and the measure of your hope. Oh Lord, we pray for the leaders of our city, of our state, of our nation. Grant them your wisdom. They may seek your way, that they may seek to do your will. They may seek kindness in their decisions, that they would work for justice, compassion, and caring for all of your people. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who grieve, those who have lost a loved one. Be with them in their time of loss. Grant them the peace that passes all understanding and be with them as they go through this difficult time. Dear Lord, we pray for those we know, but we also lift our prayers to those unknown to us, that you may be with them, 
always. Dear Lord, we pray for those folks in the path of this incoming hurricane. Keep them from harm's way. Keep their families and their friends in your arms. We pray for those folks who are going there to care for them, to help them. May this storm pass and be brief. All of these things we pray, O oh God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Griffin. We got one for Captain Kangaroo. Who remembers Captain Kangaroo? Right? That's a little old school for you. Um, but you know what he wants to help with? Children's ministry. We're trying to get people to sign up, help us with our Sunday school classes, help us with our Wednesday night. Wednesday night, we're not talking about four hours. We're talking about an hour and a half. You're done and home for dinner by seven. Please sign up to help us with that. You can place those connection cards in the offering plate as it comes by. Don't make me bring out Mr. Moose and the ping pong balls next week. <laughs> Friends, God has blessed us in so very many ways. Everything we have is a gift from God. We can respond to his gifts. We can respond to God's goodness at this time in our worship service with God's tithes and with our offerings.
is God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above you, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Father, we offer our thanks, our thanks for the gifts you have given us, the thanks for the love and the grace you have shown us. Dear Lord, use these offerings, use our lives, that we may spread that love, that grace, the very kindness you call us to throughout our church, throughout our city, and throughout your entire creation. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my Thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you for being with us online. Know that you are at home, but in our hearts, we are all as one, and we are grateful that you're part of our faith family. You have the opportunity to sign up today for several other opportunities along the extended table. They're sorted by categories to do. Take the opportunity to stop on the way out and sign up if there's anything that you didn't catch today. And also know that the deacons and elders are staying afterwards for an emergency preparedness meeting. We're going to come up with some plans that uh, we need to put in place just in the event of something that happens. So deacons and elders, I remind you, will meet in the fireside room. And now, friends, may the love of God, the fellowship of the, Ho of the Holy Spirit, and the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go now in peace, never be.
be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. Know he will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show so all the world can see.